y'all welcome to another video on my channel and today i'm gonna be painting a hound of tindalo so just a heads up there's gonna be some spoilers for a short story that this creature is based on but i don't know how <laughs> how much of spoiler alert i can give for a 1929 story hounds of tindalos are fictional creatures uh, created by frank long they first appeared in a, story, in a short story titled Hounds of Tindalos that was published in 1929. Uh, if you're familiar with H.P. Lovecraft's work, the name Tindalos might be ringing some bells because Long and Lovecraft, they indeed were friends and they've been continuous contributors to each other's works creating this kind of joint universe between their literature. Lovecraft mentions Tindalos in his short story, The Whisper in the Darkness, so what are hounds of tindalos? They are extra-dimensional, extraterrestrial life form capable of materializing in any point in time and space to feed upon as long as there is an angle or a corner present that is rather sharp, kind of like 120 degrees or sharper, because corners are doorways, tindalos doorways. Basically, the story goes something like this. The main character, who is an occult writer, experiments with all sorts of drugs to apprehend the fourth dimension. Uh, and he indeed succeeds in doing so. He perceives everything at the same time. He goes through different time eras in human history. He lives um, all sorts of different lives. And eventually he reaches an abyss of being which man has never fathomed, which consists of unearthly angles where he gets marked by Tindalos and they start hunting him. Why angles? It's not explained too much in the story. The hounds inhabit the angles of time while other beings descend from curves and the hounds themselves are complete opposite of um, any other life form. They are the exact opposite of anything pure, of life. They are just this, you know, original evil basically he talks about some deed that was done before the time that caused the existence of evil and foulness and everything like that so in attempt to protect himself from the hounds chalmer proceeds to plaster all the corners and all the angles in his room trying to create kind of like a spherical dimension in his apartment in order to barrier himself from the hounds because hounds cannot go through curves. <laughs> but a sudden earthquake just shatters everything he's done and he gets devoured by Tindalos. So now let's talk about painting the hound of Tindalos. Basically there is no set in stone description of them. The only things that we know is that they appear out of the cloud of smoke from the angles and that they have like a tentacle or a tongue that they use to drain the their victim of bodily fluids that they excrete some kind of blue liquid kind of like slime or pus so the lack of description makes it easy and hard to design at the same time because on one hand you have complete freedom in doing anything on the other hand you kind of have nothing to go off like you don't have any other characteristic other than being dangerous being foul and being some kind of extraterrestrial form of life. The reason why Tindalos are not given any kind of descriptions is because Long and Lovecraft argued that they're too foul to describe. So the way I started going after it is I got inspired by Helminth chargers, which are disinfected dog-like pets you can have in a video game I play Warframe. And they're kind of some, something like I would imagine the Hound of Tindalos look, would look like. Um, so I implemented the overall head shape and some like textures on the body from them. And the funny thing is that I actually have uh, a charger in the game that is named Tindalos. And he's my most favorite boy. I also decided to give the creature some kind of tentacles because I kind of nod to all the designs that been done to depict Lovecraftian monsters because when you think about it a lot of times they are depicted with um, tentacles like the Cthulhu so multiple eyes I decided to give it multiple eyes like a lot of eyes because I feel like 
a lot of eyes is something that is generally uncomfortable to look at but the ones that I painted they kind of look like googly eyes <laughs> and it makes me giggle every time I look at it even though it's not a supposed like it's not a supposed reaction that I was going for when painting it but they made me so happy those little dumb googly eyes they made me so happy so I decided to keep them because if something makes me that happy I usually tend to keep them so but yeah it was a fun experience to paint something that is not necessarily designed to look like anything and it was a kind of like a fun exercise in painting you know something else something different that I usually paint and it's been a fun getting out of my comfort zone experience and this is the result I hope you like it so let me know what you think in the comments down below if you have any suggestion on like a literature creature that I can paint leave it down there as well and subscribe for more videos and stay hydrated and I'll see you next Wednesday bye